Okay. Okay, everybody. Um, I know I said on Tuesday already that, uh, you know, the usual bit, make sure you're submitting one completed lab report, but also make sure that uh, you're making the effort to label everything correctly because uh, 13 out of 22 had a higher on the last lab report, uh, but the remainder of them, it, it was pretty bad, so I'm not going to make the effort to try to grade something that's, you know, put it bluntly, half as done. But those of you that are here, if I recall correctly, for the most part, it was good. Um, don't quote me on that. But I'll be I'll start posting grades uh, by tomorrow, um, your last lab grade and uh, your uh, homework grade, because I got those done. Okay, lab 10, 11, and 12 all have to do with animal diversity. Uh, lab 10, animal, animal diversity 1. Uh, invertebrates, uh, basically, uh, if you want to call it our uh, oldest living phyla of uh, invertebrates, beginning with our sponges, which are known better as the, uh, which are part of the phyla periphera than are our darians, and our platy helmets, which uh, most popularly go by flatworms. So normally what would happen is you would come into the lab, there would be some actual samples of sponges, you know, some would look like this sponges uh, here. And then what you would do, would you would transition into uh, looking at um, sponges like I have up here, and then we would have some uh, prepared slides for you to look at. So since we're limited, <clears throat> basically the way this works is one of the samples you're going to label, okay, is going to look like this. This is a cross section of a type of sponge that they call Scypha or Grantia. Now basically what you're looking at here is as if is as if you had cut or sliced out a section, a cross section. Okay, so the slide uh, that I was showing you that I'm going to put it back on, when you're looking at it, it's like you're looking down the opening or through the opening called the osculum down into the cavity of the sponge known as the sponge seal. So this is what you're actually looking at. You're looking down into the inside of the sponge. This would be the outer body of the sponge. These folds right here that you see that they're showing you here, that's what they're highlighting here. They're highlighting the wall of the sponge, and they magnify it. These are the folds you're looking at, okay? On one side, the folds, the folds open up and connect to this cavity, sponge cavity, called the sponge seal. These right here are called your <coughs> radial canals, which they show you here. Now, the part of the folds that face the exterior, the outer environment to the outside, you can see here they're showing you that's your in current. So going back to this slide, what, you want to, what you're looking at here basically is actually the sponger seal, part of the cavity. And you can see this one right here, there's an opening connecting it straight to this cavity. That lets you know it's a radial. So right outside and in between these two finger-like projections, that should let you know it's an in current canal. Now, the wall of the sponge has many tiny openings or pores, which, uh, oh, it's slowing down, which, plural, we say ostia. For one, it's ostium. I'm not picky about that. So here they're showing you. You would look at the wall separating the radial canal from the anchor, and you're looking for openings. Any openings that you might be able to see, those would be the ostia or ostium. So those are some of the labels that you're going to be uh, adding to these picks that I gave you. Now, I did give you a pick of a sponge. It's a textbook pick. Uh, so just use your textbook to help you get an idea of uh, where to place the labels on those. Then the next, you were going to look at the phylum Cnidaria. Specifically, you were going to look at Hydra and Obelia. Okay, these are two organisms that fall under this uh, phylum, which often we just say Cnidarians. Most people have seen the Hydra here. Okay, it's the Obelia that they haven't seen. So for the Hydra, I've given you some labels <clears throat> that you have to attach. Okay, this one right here is as basic a diagram as, as I've been able to come across to help you get your labeling started. There'll be an area that you have to identify called the mouth, which is up here towards the superior part in between all these tentacles. What it doesn't show you here, but it does show you on another figure, is this little, what do you want to call it, dome-shaped structure, this little curve here. This entire curve area, which includes the opening of the mouth, is... It's known as the uh, hypostome. I'm trying to remember. Here it is, hypostome. So I give you everything you need. You're just going to – just all the labels may not be on one diagram. Another one, the body cavity here, this internal cavity of the hydra, that's known as the gastrovascular cavity. So it's going to ask you to identify structures such as the dermis, the mesoglea, and the gastrodermis. When you do those, 
it's not actually going to be a longitudinal section that you're going to use if I can find it. This is actually going to be a cross section that you're going to use. Okay, this right here on this prepared slide, again, kind of parallels the sponge. Imagine we take a hydra and we just slice, create a cross section. Okay, and slice out a piece of it. So the slide I'm sure I'm going to go back to, it's as if you're looking straight down, okay, into its body cavity or gastrovascular cavity. That's what this is. Now notice I gave you some arrows to help give you an idea, okay, of where to start looking for the uh, epidermis and gastrodermis and mesoglea as you go. And some of these figures have it too to try to help you out. I'm going to mention a couple of other things uh, briefly because, like I said, all of it should be on the PowerPoints. It will also talk to you about a basal disc. Okay, I have a figure I gave you, and I try to tell you it's the lower half so that you can compare it to this figure so you know when you're looking at the lower half versus the upper half. Listen carefully. If you see a CS, okay, I want you to remember that means cross-section. If you see LS next to the prepare slide, it's a longitudinal section, which is this here that you're looking at. But if you see WM, that is not a wet mount. That is a whole mount. And those are pretty much most of the pictures I gave you, okay, for the hydra. They're whole mounts, just to let you know, okay? Now, in lab, we usually try to look at a live hydra and try to watch it feed. Okay. Now, this part here. In the tentacles of a hydra are cells called nidocytes, okay? These nidocytes contain organs called nematocysts. And these organs work like harpoons. So they're showing you here, this would be the nematocyst, and this would be the whole cell, the nidocyte. But this area here can actually eject out, which they're showing you over here, releasing this little thread-like structure that actually penetrates the body of the organism, okay, that it wants to have at its next meal. You can't see it here, but here's the hydra. Here's its tentacle, okay. And what it's actually done is harpooned a little guy that's a food source known as a daphnia. I call it a little water flea because that's what it actually looks like. Okay. So part of what you're going to be identifying are nidocytes. Okay. The way you tell the nidocytes, all these little bumps here. So make sure that you realize when I'm just pointing at the whole structure versus if I'm directly pointing at one of these. If I'm pointing at one of these, you can see the tentacles covered with these little guys called nidocytes that release these little harpoons. Okay. All right, let's see. Then we have what we call obelia. We're supposed to have two stages of obelia, but we're basically going to have just one stage, which I have on your notes. And the center is going to look comparable to what's here on the left side of the slide, okay, which is over here on the side. Now, let's see. Okay, I don't know how long we're going to last here. It's not responding. I thought I had an extra slide. Okay, so the sample I gave you of obelia is comparable to this one, okay? And the obelia is going to have what they call um, polyps, okay? Some are going to be uh, what we call feeding polyps. Some of them are going to be called what are re reproductive polyps. So that's what you'll want to look at on this figure. In lecture, we'll go over more detail about what the heck am I looking at here. But in regards to feeding polyps, the way you mainly identify them is that they have tentacles. So on both pictures, you can see the feeding polyps have tentacles here. Okay, and yeah, there are nidocytes, but I won't focus on that for obelia. But you can tell that's when you're looking at a feeding polyp. Over here on this figure here, and then over here, okay, when you see what looks like kind of little uh, misshapen or kind of odd-shaped beads inside of what looks like a thin, uh, what do you call it, saran wrap wrapping, and there are no tentacles present, that's when you know if you look down here, you're looking at a reproductive polyp, just to help you all out some, okay? And it's bracketing here, the whole reproductive polyp. So the obelia is not too hard. Then we have the platyhelminth. Uh, the type of platyhelminth or flatworm you're going to be looking at is called planaria. Usually this is when you would look at a live planarian, okay, moving around the little dish. They're little tiny guys, and this is actually one of the live ones we had in lab. It looks like it has a pair of eyes and ears almost to me. I kind of uh, say it resembles a little fox head there. But in actuality, it doesn't have eyes. The, right here where it looks like it has eyes, that's actually openings in its body called eye spots where it has sensory receptors. So these are a couple of other pictures. 
I've given you the labels that you're going to have to identify just to give you a little hint. Okay, one of them is going to say, hey, what's the dorsal, what's the ventral side? Well, the ventral or belly side is what they're showing you here. And it's also showing you that on that ventral side or belly side, that's where you can see the structures much easier, such as the mouth or the pharynx or the gastrovascular cavity. Okay. Now, <clears throat> let me go back to this one. And then what looks like a pair of eyes, if you come over here to the structure, they're telling you this. It says ocelli, but just know them as eye spots. They're actually structures called eye spots, okay, because that's what they look like, but they're not actually eyes like on us. But the yellow stuff is just neural tissue because it's sensory areas. Now, I'm not going to test you on that, but just to let you know. And then roughly in this area where it looks like little pointed ears, that lets you know you're in a general region called the auricles. This diagram is being a little more technical, but just know the little pointed area, that's where you would find the auricles. But again, this over here, okay, wherever you can see the mouth, that's when you know, okay, I'm looking at the ventral or belly side here. Where the eye spots are, that's the anterior. Okay, that lets you know the opposite side is the tail. So the planarian here, okay, has some, what we call some bilateral symmetry to it. Then what you're going to do is you're going to, you have a prepared sample, prepared slide sample of a cross section in addition to a whole mount of the planarian. Okay, this figure here, okay, you'll want to look at to help you with both. So if it's the whole mount, it's, the prepared slide was actually very large, so the way I had to kind of, uh, what do you call it, cut and paste it together for you all. So hopefully it's good enough. And just use this as one of your guides, as well as a previous figure I showed you to help you label everything. But then I give you a, uh, also a pick of a prepared sample. You would have looked at a prepared slide sample that's a cross-section. Okay. What you're going to be looking at is a cross-section that comes from the middle of the planarian. So this is where you will focus on right in here okay and so that's the whole mount and I pieced it together and this is what you'll be looking at here the cross section so you're basically looking through the in internal part of the midsection of the planarian okay I have arrows on the diagram to help you narrow down okay this is roughly where the labels are going to go uh, everybody, I think by now, hopefully, for those of you that are taking care of your, your responsibilities, you know, hey, look, uh, we're earning that two hour and 50 minutes we paid for here, okay? So uh, just, you know, take the time to make sure you can get that. The lab format is the same before. It's, it's in there. Um, it's due next week, the usual time. Um, or uh, You've got time. So, uh, yeah, my recommendation is uh, if you haven't jumped on the test yet, get the test knocked out first and shift over to the lab. Okay, uh, do y'all have any questions first about the lab? It's the same format as the other two, basically. Okay, then uh, I'm not going to give you any answers for the exams, but did y'all have any last-second questions about that? Y'all awake? I'm not getting a response. Okay. All right. <laughs> no questions. Okay. All right, then. That's, that's it, then. It's just, you know, same format.